Ahoy mates, I'm Jordan Xavier, welcome to my channel and all that. Today, I wanna to talk about film photography. So, I've been a photographer for about 10 to 15 years, I wanna say, but I just started shooting film about a year ago, I wanna say, yeah, just about a year. And I figured that I would make a video and basically share some tips that I've learned along the way of my 10 year shooting film. So, let's get into it. So I started shooting film about a year ago just because I was kind of bored with photography and I wanted to just try something new. And I was gifted this, well handed down, this Canon AE-1 a long, long time ago. And I just never used it because I thought that it was gonna be a complicated process. I didn't even think that there were still film labs around that would, you know, develop photos and whatnot. I thought I was gonna have to go somewhere and develop it myself or, I really didn't know anything about film photography. And then once I started shooting and realized how easy it was, I was like, damn, I should have been doing this a long time ago because there's just a certain characteristic of film that in my opinion makes it look better than digital. There's just the quality to the grain and the colors that I feel that you can't really get on digital. Here's a quick comparison between a film shot and a digital shot in the same location. So first, let's talk about the types of 35 millimeter cameras that there are, or the main ones at least. So the one that you're probably gonna see most often are these SLRs, single lens reflex. And one of the main reasons you would wanna use one of these is because of all the manual control you have over everything. So you can control your shutter speed, you can control your aperture, your ISO, and you also have the ability to swap out lenses. So right now I have a 28 millimeter F 2.8 lens on here but i could also put a zoom lens on here if i wanted i can get a 50 millimeter and basically you just have full control over doing whatever you would really want to do with this camera i also have a pro mist filter on here right now which is something that you can't do with drum roll the next camera i want to talk about a point and shoot so a point and shoot is another type of film camera that you're probably gonna see quite often. And the main selling point of something like this is the fact that it's a little bit more convenient and less bulky than carrying something like an SLR around. So this is something you can just throw in your coat pocket if you're just going out to hang out with some friends or something like that. Just slip it in your pocket and you'll have it. The best camera is always the one that you have on you. So if it's easier to carry around something like this, then you might as well do that. I probably use and carry around my point and shoot way more than I do my SLR because this is when I'm just running around doing mundane things. Like if I'm just going to take a drive or something i might just take the point and shoot rather than the slr just because like i said it's more convenient less bulky and less of a hassle to carry around one thing that you want to take note of with point and shoots is that you're pretty much limited to the lens that the point and shoot comes with you can't change the lenses out on anything like a point and shoot so this one has a 38 millimeter to 70 millimeter the widest aperture is 3.5 so it's not going to be as wide as something like that 2.8 i had on my slr which means that it's going to be worse in low light so basically it comes down to this if you want something that you can control all of the settings with then go with something like an slr and you're usually going to have better performance in low light because you can get prime lenses and those typically perform a little bit better and also the glass of the lenses are just a little bit better quality so you'll get a little bit better quality in your pictures. But if you want something you can just throw in your coat pocket just to take shots, snapshots of everyday life, then a point and shoot is more than fine. So now that you know the main differences between, differences, differences between an SLR and a point and shoot, what's next? Well now you need some film to throw in that bad boy. So. Head on over to your local camera shop, CVS, Walmart. There are actually a lot of places that sell film, a lot more than I thought when I first started shooting, but you're probably gonna get the best prices from a local camera shop. Like out here, we have a place called Shutterbug in Portland, and they generally have a huge selection 
and they usually have good prices. And you can also buy film online from places like Moment, Film Supply Club, and Amazon. You can find it sometimes, but a lot of the time it's marked up. So I would stick to local camera shops or places like Moment or Film Supply. So what type of film do you want to shoot? It's a good question. Let's talk about it. So I just so happened to have some film right over here. So this is Kodak Gold 200. This is my favorite film stock, mainly because price to value and performance wise for the value, this is, this is the best bang for the buck in my opinion. So you'll see that it says 200 on this box. That's the ISO. If you're coming from a background in digital photography, it's a little bit different. You know how you can change your ISO in the camera and it basically lets more light in as your ISO rises, but it also causes, causes more grain. In film photography, the ISO is tied to the film itself. So this is ISO 200. So being that this is a lower ISO, you're gonna wanna shoot something like this in the daytime. ISO 200 isn't really that good for low light photography, but you can get away with it under the right conditions. The main film that you're probably gonna hear about by film enthusiasts is this Portra 400. Now, this is what most consider to be the best all around film. It's, it's really good. It really does have a nice grain pattern to it, really nice colors, but you can get a roll of this for about 10 to $15 and you can get a three pack of Kodak Gold for about $12.99. So it really depends on what you're shooting. If you wanna make sure that you get the best images as possible, maybe you wanna splurge on some Portrait 400. But if you're just starting out or you're just taking snapshots, I would go with something like Kodak Gold. Now, if you're shooting at night, you're gonna wanna go with something that has a higher ISO. So this is Cinestill 800T. I have some of it in my Canon AE-1 right now. And the T stands for tungsten. So it basically takes that orange warm light that you see that's prevalent at nighttime and it basically gives it like a cooler glow. So this is something that really looks like film stills and it's one of my favorite films. And here's some examples of it that I'm gonna throw on the screen now. There's a lot of different film stocks. So you basically have to do your research and see which one appeals to you the most. But here are some examples of some of the film stocks that I've shot. I haven't shot any black and white yet. I want to, but I just haven't. However, I was gifted some Kodak 400 TX from a friend and I haven't shot it yet. But keep in mind that when you shoot black and white, it does take a longer development process. So it's generally more expensive when you take it to a lab for development. So you went out and you bought some Portra 400 just to rub it in people's faces that you're rich. Cool. So what do you do now? Now you have to know how to load the film. And I'll be honest, when I first started shooting film, I messed up a few rolls trying to load it into my SLR. So loading film into an SLR, especially these older ones like the Canon AE-1 is a bit of a tedious process. Now it does get easier loading film into an SLR in time, but your first few times you may mess up a few rolls. So that's why I definitely recommend going with cheaper rolls. Now, if you have a point and shoot, that makes things a lot easier. You basically lay the film canister in there, pull a film over, lay it there, close the back, and the camera winds it up for you and gets everything ready to shoot. And there are some newer SLRs that do that as well. So if you get like a newer Canon or newer Pentax camera, like this Pentax camera that I have right here, a ZX50, it does everything automatically. So you don't really have to wrap the film around the spool like I showed you with the Canon AE-1. 
So now you have your film loaded, what now? Now you need to prepare before you take it out into the field and make some magic with it. So if you shot with a point and shoot, you're basically all good to go. The camera pretty much does its magic. You turn it on, you point and shoot, simple as that. Now there are some modes and some different features that you should be aware of when using a point and shoot. I'm not really gonna get into them in this video. If you loaded your film into a manual SLR like this Canon AE-1, then things become a bit more complicated, but nothing too crazy. The main thing you wanna do is make sure that you set your camera to the same speed as the film. So set your camera's ISO to the same speed as the film, and that's usually something like this. So on this Canon AE-1, I press this button and I turn this, and that's how you set your ISO. When you're just starting out, you're gonna wanna set it to box speed. There is a technique called pushing and pulling, which allows you to shoot at different speeds, but since this is a beginner film video, I'm not gonna get into this and confuse anyone. So just set it to the same speed that you see on a box. So Kodak Gold 200, set, it, set your camera's ISO to 200. Another thing that you need to take note of when you put a new roll of film in an SLR, you might see an S on the exposure counter of your camera, and that means you need to advance through the frames to the first shot, and that's done by doing this. So you went out there and you shot some fire, congratulations. Or you messed up your whole roll and you shot it wrong. That's how you learn. But what do you do after that? So if you have a point and shoot, your film's gonna automatically rewind, or even some of the newer SLRs, they rewind for you so you don't really have to worry about that. Now, if you were shooting on something manual like this Canon AE-1 program, then you really wanna look at your specific camera's manual, but generally there's a button that you press on the bottom of your camera that releases the film, and then you can turn it. So for instance, on this one, I turn it clockwise and it rewinds the film and then you hear a tiny, a small kind of quiet click. And then what I usually do is turn it for a few more revolutions around and then I open the back and grab your film out. And the reason that I turn it a few more times is just because even after it clicks, there's still a little bit of the film exposed and it's usually like the sample shot so you don't really have to worry about it. But if you wanna make sure that none of your film is really exposed, then turn it a few more times before you open it back up. So now you have a completed roll of film and you put it back in one of these handsome little plastic thingies, right? So what do you do now? You basically take it to a local film lab and have them do all the hard work for you. And that's what I generally do. Well, you basically just take it to them, tell them if it's color or black and white, because like I mentioned earlier, it's a different development process for black and white and it's usually a bit more expensive. So just let them know if it's color or black and white. And basically you s fill out some information. They ask you how you would like the files. You can either get them emailed to you or you can get them printed out at whatever size you want. I generally just get mine emailed to me and you get the files and then you can look through it and see if you want any of them printed. And that's pretty much what I normally do. Now, different film labs have different development times. For instance, I go to one lab out here, Shutterbug, which is my favorite camera film development lab out here. And they generally have a 24 hour to 24 to 48 hour turnaround period. On the other hand, there's another lab that I go to that's a bit cheaper, but they have a week to sometimes two or more week development time just because they're so busy. So I did also want to mention that there are online labs that you can send your film into, such as the darkroom.com. You basically finish shooting your roll, pack it up, send it to them, and they send you back the files or the photos or whatever you want, whatever you select. So keep in mind that that's an option too. Now let's talk about development costs. That's going to vary from lab to lab, shop to shop, even state to state. But the average price that I've seen to get film developed is about $15 per roll, but I've also seen it as cheap as about $10 per roll. So let's take into account the fact that you're paying about $10 for a roll of film and then $15 to get it developed. That's $25 a roll. So if you're shooting a roll a week, that's about $1,300 a year and just shooting film. But to be fair, you're probably not gonna shoot every week and you're probably not gonna go through a roll every week. So the cost is probably a lot less than that, but that's just for reference sake. 
So I hope I answered most of the questions that you may have when it comes to shooting film and cleared up some of the misconceptions. But if you do have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll answer any questions you may have. And that's all I have for you today. I have nothing else that I can think of at the moment. Like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Hit me up on any social media. I'm Jordan XAVR on everything. Feel free to hit me up. I'm friendly most of the time. Other times I hate everybody, but just know it's not personal. Aside from that, thank you for watching. Hit that like button for me and subscribe. If you like this video, please do all that, you know, generic like and subscribe stuff for me because it really does help out. Be a pal, you know, but I digress. Thank you for watching. Peace and blessings and all of that and whatnot and so forth and so on.